Welcome to Create a Custom Cover Letter with Walden Career Planning and Development. I'm Dina Bergren, and joining me today is also Denise Pranky from the Career Planning and Development team. We hear many students and alumni say that cover letters are one of the most difficult parts of the job search process. If you ever struggled with writing a cover letter, this program is definitely designed for you. First of all, for those of you who are new to Walden's Career Planning and Development Department, our department's mission is to support both students and alumni in developing workplace skills to thrive as professionals and social change agents in organizations and in communities. Our department is a part of the Office of Student Affairs, and we are here to support you during the pursuit of your Walden de degree and beyond. Although we are focusing specifically on cover letters today, we do want you to know that we also have a multitude of resources and offerings that are available on our website to help you manage your career. We strongly encourage you to visit our website at careercenter.waldenu.edu after this session to learn more about our offerings and services. In this session, we will cover the purpose of a cover letter, how to organize your cover letter and what to include, ways to use a cover letter to differentiate yourself from other applicants by highlighting your relevant qualifications and accomplishments. And we will also guide you to resources on the Career Planning and Development website that can help you. Next, let's look at the purpose of a cover letter. The main reasons for a cover letter are to introduce yourself to an employer and to set yourself apart from other candidates. Your cover letter should communicate your most relevant qualifications and accomplishments related to the specific opportunity that you're targeting. And it is also a chance to showcase your writing skills. Be clear about why you're interested in that particular position. Concisely articulate, how are you a great fit? How can you benefit the organization? And what problems can you help them solve? Entice the reader to want to learn more about you by focusing on your unique value and strengths. And finally, motivate the employer to contact you for an interview by reiterating your enthusiasm for the organization and for the position. The ultimate purpose is to be invited in for an inter interview. Now that we have explored the purpose of a cover letter, let's look at strategies to tailor your letter to specific positions. We want to stress that the key to a great cover letter is to tailor it to the job posting and to the organization. The employer wants to know how you can provide value to them and what exactly makes you a good fit. Before starting to write your cover letter, the first step is to review the job description and the position requirements. Does the job description focus on problem solving or analytical skills? Do they require a specific number of years of experience in a certain functional area? are certain technical skills needed for this role. While reviewing the job description, make notes of keywords and highlight the most important qualifications they are looking for. Next, research the organization. What is their product or service? How large is this organization? What does their website say about the culture and the mission? Next, match your skills to the qualifications of the position, and then write strong accomplishment statements that describe your achievements. And finally, showcase your professional brand in your cover letter. When thinking about your brand, ask yourself, what are my strengths? What makes me stand out from other applicants? We'll continue to explore how to tailor your cover letter throughout this program. But before I hand it over to Denise to go over our next topic, 
we want to address a general question that we often get from students and alumni. The question is, do I even need to include a cover letter when I apply for positions? Denise, would you like to answer this question? Yes, Dean, I would be happy to. So the simple answer is yes, it is an advantage to include a well-written cover letter when applying, whether a cover letter is required or optional. A cover letter will enhance your application by further highlighting your qualifications and help to set you apart from other applicants. Um, I'll add, though, that there are rare occasions where the application directions explicitly state to only submit a resume. So in that case, you would not want to include a cover letter. Um, those are rare um, occurrences, but it does happen. So, um, but again, in most cases, we recommend submitting a cover letter. Great, thank you so much, Denise. I will let you take it from here. Okay, thanks, Dina. So next, let's go over some basic formatting tips. You wanna keep your cover letter to one page with three to five short paragraphs. The margins should be a one inch on all sides. And then the font size should be 11 to 12 points in a common font such as Ariel, Calibri, Times New Roman, Garamond, or you know the same standard font that you use for your resume is also a great choice. You wanna be concise, but provide enough detail to be interesting and help you stand out as a highly qualified applicant. And finally, always double check spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Run your cover letter through Grammarly and have someone proofread it for you as well. So next, we're gonna look at the overall structure of the cover letter. Here is a sample cover letter template in standard business format that outlines what to include. If possible, try to address the letter to the hiring manager. Um, if you can't find the name of the hiring manager, then we suggest using um, Dear Hiring Manager or Dear Search Committee. Organize your letter into an introduction paragraph that states why you are writing the letter, expresses your interest and enthusiasm for the position, and briefly sums up why you're a good fit. Um, if someone referred you to, for the position, you also want to include that information in the intro paragraph. The body is the most challenging section. This section should be two to three paragraphs, organize the paragraphs by professional experience and academic qualifications, provide examples of your accomplishments that relate to the position and the organization. If you're making a career transition, craft statements that highlight your transferable skills. Transferable skills are skills gained from past experience that are relevant in your new position or that position that you're applying for. For example, if someone is transitioning from customer service to human resources, they would have transferable skills such as active listening, verbal communication skills, conflict resolution, and problem solving. Um, you could include a few bullet points in the body of your um, paragraphs, um, but don't repeat your, what's on your resume verbatim. And then in the closing paragraph, state your interest in setting up an interview and how you can be contacted. Remember that your cover letter is also an opportunity to showcase your writing skills. So next, let's look more closely at each section and some examples from a variety of Walden programs. So we're gonna start with the introduction paragraph. Again, you wanna state the position you're interested in. In one or two sentences, tell them why you're interested in the position and include a broad statement about your qualifications. Um, if you were referred, again, include the full name of the person who referred you. Avoid going into too much detail in that first paragraph. 
So next, let's look at um, the three examples of introductory paragraphs. Um, we hope that looking at these examples will spark ideas for you when you create your own cover letter. So as we go through the examples, we want to acknowledge that there is a lot of text on these slides um, that may be too small for you to read. Um, we included the full text, though, so you would have a visual context of what the paragraph should look like. Um, we encourage you to enlarge the slide if you like or refer to the full copies of each of the letters that we're using in your resource list. Um, so with that, let's look at this example of an introduction paragraph for a bachelor's student in criminal justice. The organization and flow of this example would also be applicable to many other Walden programs. So notice that the applicant identified the hiring manager for the position by name, um, Ms. Michaela Widmore. Um, we often get asked, what to do if I don't know the name of the hiring manager. So Dina, do you have any suggestions on how to find the name of the hiring manager? Yes, definitely, Denise. I would first take a look at the organization's website to see if I could find a list that would have the names of their leaders. I could also use LinkedIn.com, which is the largest professional networking site, and search for the hiring manager by their job title or their organization. Otherwise, if I am unable to find the information I'm looking for online, I could contact the organization directly or contact their human resources department and ask for the hiring manager's name. Oh, great. Thanks, Dina, for that advice. And then, and as we mentioned earlier, if after trying um, and using Dina's suggestions, you still can't find the name, um, uh, we recommend using Dear Hiring Manager or Dear Search Committee. So next, moving down to the paragraph, notice the applicant clearly states the position she's applying for. She says, Please accept this cover letter and accompanying resume as application for the victim advocate position for the district attorney's victim services unit. Um, she also states her enthusiasm for the position. She states, when I read the job description, I immediately felt a connection to the position and the goals of your department to offer help, healing, and hope for victims of crime. And she closes the paragraph with a broad statement about her qualifications. She says, my bachelor's degree in criminal justice, experience working with survivors of domestic violence, and commitment to comprehensive services to support victims in rebuilding their lives make me an, a highly qualified candidate for this position. So next, let's take a look at another example of the introductory paragraph for someone applying for a practicum or internship. In this example, the applicant clearly states she's interested in a practicum or internship to complete the requirements of her academic program. And she states why she is specifically interested in the organization. Keep in mind, if you state something about about an organization, you want to make sure it's authentic. Only say you are impressed if you truly are impressed. Um, so next, let's look at an example of an introduction paragraph for an alum who's applying for an adjunct faculty position in higher education. So here, notice that the applicant explicitly states their enthusiasm for teaching and personalizes the letter by including a statement about his commitment to the college's mission. He says, I'm excited about the prospect of engaging your diverse student body in a learning environment that reflects your vision and mission. I believe that my education, experience, and commitment to the transformative power of education, as stated in your mission, make me an excellent candidate for this position. So he definitely personalized the letter for the organization he's applying for. 
So next, let's go over strategies for the body paragraphs. In the body of your document, communicate your most relevant accomplishments and give examples. The cover letter is a great opportunity to describe your skills in action. Be concise, but provide enough detail to show your strengths and who you are as a professional. And finally, again, avoid repeating your resume verbatim. So um, next, let's look at the body paragraph for our three examples. Um, this first one is the criminal justice sample. So in this example, um, for the uh, a position as a victim's advocate, the applicant's first paragraph in the body of the letter is about her academic program and knowledge. Her second body paragraph is about her relevant volunteer experience. And her third body paragraph is about her current position. She also prioritizes the paragraphs by importance. The paragraphs would not necessarily have to be in this order. Um, if you're making a career transition, it often makes sense to have the paragraph about your academic program first, because that's likely to be your strongest qualification. So next, um, let's look at the body paragraph for the search for a practicum or internship. In this example, the first body paragraph is about the applicant's academic program, including accreditation information and courses she's taken. Her second body paragraph includes her knowledge and areas, um, the areas that um, she has knowledge of, um, specifically related to her academic program and her relevant volunteer experience. Um, she also acknowledges her transferable skills in the areas of technology, organization, and communications gained from her experience as an administrative assistant. So next, um, let's take a look at the example of the body paragraphs for the letter applying for a higher ed adjunct teaching position. So here, the first body paragraph focuses on the applicant's academic accomplishments. Again, his research and a professional a presentation he's delivered. And then the second paragraph focuses on his experience and provides a specific example of how his academic program has helped him excel in his current role as a director of human resources. So now we're going to look at the closing paragraphs for our three examples. So in the closing paragraph, you want to reiterate your enthusiasm and interest in the position and ask for an interview. And you also want to thank them for reviewing your materials. Remember, as Dina said, the main purpose of the cover letter and resume is to land an interview. So next, um, let's uh, start with our first example um, for the closing paragraph for the uh, applicant for a criminal justice position. So in this closing paragraph, the applicant expresses her enthusiasm. She states, your open position for a victim advocate offers an opportunity to do exactly the type of work that motivated me to pursue my bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I look forward to an opportunity to learn more about the position and share how I can have a positive impact as a member of your team. So again, she reiterates her enthusiasm. So next, let's look at the practicum and internship example, the closing paragraph um, for this applicant. Um, here, the applicant expresses that she is eager and ready to apply the academic knowledge she gained in her program. She also includes links to specific program information that will be helpful to a potential site supervisor. And again, she expresses her appreciation for reviewing her application. And so, and let's look next at the closing paragraph for the applicant for a higher ed teaching position. In this closing paragraph, again, the applicant expresses enthusiasm. 
Um, he also emphasizes his qualification um, of experience using online learning platforms. And he asks for an interview. And he concludes with, I look forward to further discussing how I am a strong candidate for your open adjunct position. And he says, thank you for your time and consideration. So we hope these examples will spark ideas for you to create your own cover letter that reflects who you are as a professional. Um, and so next, I'm going to hand it back to Dina to share some additional strategies you can use to strengthen your letter. Thank you, Denise. I would like to introduce the CART framework, which is very helpful to craft accomplishment statements to include in your cover letter. CART stands for challenge, what was the problem, action, what did you do to solve the problem, did you initiate it, result, who or what was impacted and how, and the tie-in to what you can do in the future. So here's a verbal example of a CART statement from the higher ed teaching example that we previously went over together. The following statement ties in academic research experience with what the applicant can do for their future employer. I examined partnership programs between a large university and eight nonprofit community organizations to determine common factors that contributed to success. I would bring the knowledge that I gained from my research to enhance your college's partnerships with local nonprofits. So now we are going to talk about how to match your skills to position requirements. As you continue to prepare to apply for new opportunities out there, remember to always match your accomplishments to the organization's needs. This is a very important strategy and it involves carefully reviewing the job description to determine the organization's needs and the qualifications for that particular position. In this example, the organization is looking for a candidate who can collaborate across departments. Instead of simply telling the employer, I am collaborative, the applicant shows the employer that they are co collaborative through a detailed and concise accomplishment statement. They provide specific details and include outcomes or results. So in our example, the applicant states, by collaborating with the quality assurance manager on analyzing metrics, improving processes, and strengthening training programs, I improve departmental workflow efficiency and reduce customer complaints by 12%. When writing your accomplishment statements, Remember to quantify or include numbers when possible. Numbers can help your reader understand the scope of your experience. Next, let's take a look at some additional resources on the Career Planning and Development website for creating your application materials. When you create your cover letter, know that you do not need to start from scratch. Visit the Resumes and More tab on the Career Planning and Development website, and there you can access custom samples, helpful guides, cover letter tips and resources, and the Skills First Career Management System. Also, remember that the resources and samples are there to guide you. Always remember to use your own language when creating your application materials. Next, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Skills First. Skills First is a helpful tool to build resumes, cover letters, career portfolios, and even help you practice mock interview skills with its 12,000 plus interview questions. 
You can access Skills First through the Career Planning and Development website, and then log into the system using your Walden email and password. If you are a Walden alum who no longer has access to your Walden credentials, contact our team at careerservices at mail.waldenu.edu, and we will provide you with a special alumni access code to use the system. Skills First also has over 500 resume and cover letter samples, including over 60 Walden preferred custom samples that were created by our team and academic leaders across the university to meet the needs of specific Walden programs. To learn more about how to use Skills First, refer to the resource list included with this presentation. We hope that this program provided you with many great tools to enhance your cover letters. And at the same time, we realize that some of you may like additional support. There are three main ways to reach out to us. First, you can register for an upcoming office hours event via the Career Planning and Development homepage. These events are designed for you to interact with our staff in a group advising setting. For more personalized support, we encourage you to schedule a 45 minute career advising appointment from the Career Planning and Development website. Then we can meet you where you are and work with you over the phone or on Zoom based on your preference. Some of the most popular topics are listed on this slide. We can help you explore career paths. We can provide feedback to strengthen your resume and your cover letter. We can work together on job search strategies, provide feedback on your LinkedIn profile and help you expand your network. We also offer ideas for professional development activities and engaging in the Walden community. And finally, we can coach you on every step of the interview process to increase your chances of landing that dream job. Career advising appointments are open to both students and alumni. And then for short questions, you can also email our team at careerservices at mail.waldenu.edu. Thank you for joining us here today. And please remember that we are here to support you. So please reach out to us.